Hey there, thanks again for joining me. I, uh, I'm gonna do another quick live stream today. Um, this is gonna be on having notes that you've selected in Dorico. And the context here is if you're composing music, you've written something out, maybe you've got a melody or a phrase, even from a piece that maybe you've written in the past and you wanna use it in um, a slightly different rhythmic context. In this case, I wound up writing something in 3-4. I didn't really think about the tempo, and the tempo was set, of course, to 120, uh, which is the default. And I wanted it actually to um, fit into uh, 60. I wanted it to fit into half that tempo, so go from 120 to 60. But when you switched it to 60, it was like painfully slow. It didn't have the same sort of feel. So I realized that actually what I wanted to do was take that 3-4 melody, move it to 6-8, cut the tempo down to uh, 60 and also have maintained the feel, right? But you can imagine that if you were doing that, I mean, I, I've only got uh, 16 bars here. If you were doing that on um, something much more significant, even 32 bars or more, moving each note, turning all of those eighths into sixteenths, all those dotted quarters, you know, like doing all the math in your head, getting it right, it would take a long time and it's probably going to be super error prone. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. And I didn't have time for that. So I identified a, a quick workaround for this uh, by quickly doing some research with Dorico's many wonderful resources. And I wanted to share uh, what I discovered here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take myself off the screen and let's just listen to this. Um, so this is going to be a pretty quick lesson today. Uh, so this is what the, the, the original sounded like. So quite slow. All right, so very, very basic, very slow. Um, now that's actually at 120. And if I just change the tempo to 60, then it's really, really slow, right? So if I go to Shift-T to change my tempo, I do Q equals 60, and I play this back. It's completely lost its character. So that is not gonna be acceptable. I want it to still feel that way, but running at 60. So after making a few changes, this is what I wind up with. This is in 6-8, this is at a tempo of 60. So it's basically exactly the same sound, but now the tempo's at 60, which gives me different tools for managing my rhythmic elements. Um, percussion and things like that and the way that I think about phrases is actually going to be more suitable here in 6-8 than it is in 3-4 thinking about how the, car the harmonic, um, the, the, how the chords are going to change, how frequently, you know, what is the uh, harmonic rhythm and pace of the piece. It's going to be different in 6-8 and that's actually what I really wanted here. So let me show you quickly how it is that I got from the 3-4 version into the 6-8 the six, version uh, very quickly. Thanks for joining me, Shibas. Welcome. All right, so here I am back at the original. This is what you do. I just selected all the notes that I want to change. So this could be, you know, in my case, 16 bars, could be 8 bars, could be 32 bars, could be a 10-page symphony. Um, now you're going to go up to, I believe it is the right menu. You need to be in right mode. Come down the right menu and you're going to find this menu option called Edit Duration, and you're going to say Note or Have Note Duration, and you're going to see that all the dotted half notes, for example, get halved, all the quarters become eighths, and that sort of thing. So that's what I have now. And you can see that now what was a 16-bar passage is uh, just eight bars, but if I play it at its current tempo, which is still 120, it's blazing fast. So that's not what I wanted. I wanted the, the, the same sort of original rhythm. And part of this also is there's a little pickup note. Um, so I want, this, I want this D at the beginning to be a pickup note. 
Um, so I, I also discovered this cool feature over here in the time signature panel uh, for creating a time signature and, and adding a pickup bar. So um, I set the time signature to 6-8 here because uh, we're still in 3-4, right? And I'm going to click or check off pickup bar. Uh, I'm going to go with half a beat, but I'm going to actually have to change that anyway. But with my notes selected, and I go ahead and click where it says 6-8, then I get that. So it's perfect. Um, if you wanted to go in and modify this, you can. Um, in this context, 6 slash 8 is your time signature, and then 1 is how many uh, beats. Uh, in this context of 6, 8, a 1 would indicate an eighth, which is why it's set that up as a pickup bar there. So now I have it, uh, it's just an 8 bar um, structure. And if I go ahead and I hit Shift uh, T and I set my tempo to 60, which is my desired tempo. So now I've got it in 6, 8, and I am at a tempo of 60, but it sounds the same as the original. So that is, that's it in a nutshell. It, it's, it was quite quick to do. Um, I'm going to just reverse all of this, take myself off again. Just go back to where I was, right, which was this. And after my changes, I have this version here. So I hope that helps people out there. This would be great if you are working on assignments in uh, some kind of music study program. Quite frequently, you need to um, restructure ideas in a variety of different key signatures, time signatures, uh, not key signatures, but time signatures and tempos. Um, and also, you may have a piece written, uh, maybe you're doing some film scoring, and you want to have a slower version of this, right? So you want to take your melodic idea or some kind of leitmotif, and you want to apply it in a situation that has a different time signature, a different lilt, a different pacing, or um, something that's very slow. Maybe you want to uh, migrate this melodic phrase actually into a counter melody in French horns, and you want it to go quite the opposite from 6-8 uh, at 60. You want it to be in quarter notes and half notes and whole notes, then you can take that leitmotif and transport it into another flow and then use these uh, tools because there is actually up here in the right menu, just take myself off here quickly. Um, there was this other option here. I'm sorry, I'm getting confused. But there was, you know, you could double the note uh, duration. So if you wanted to make it longer, you wanted to take your, your um, motivic idea or your theme and you wanted to stretch it out to fill a lot more time because maybe the scene in the film is, you know, more slow or you wanted to use it as a counter melody or some kind of canon. This would all be really useful to see there. And then you don't have to worry about doing it all manually. So, um, yes, you, that, is, that is answer to your question. Uh, Jazzer 7A9, yes, you can double the note values. And um, for the same reasons, um, either moving time signatures or tempos. And, yes, I have been getting more and more into using new, uh, multiple flows. I don't know if that's something other people are already hip to. Um, but I am just loving, you know, when I first started using Dorico years ago, I really didn't understand why uh, why it would be why there was even this flows concept um, because I was not working on large works I was always working on rather rather compact sort of film scoring and media scoring type projects um, but this idea of being able to duplicate the flow I, I, I work on something duplicate the flow do my machinations to it duplicate it again reorchestrate it uh, gosh the flows is just a fantastic idea so uh, that's all I've got for today. I am on some tight deadlines this weekend, so I'm going to go, but I appreciate everybody turning up. If you are watching this after the fact and you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. And I will uh, hope everybody has a great weekend. I'll see you next week. So take care. Bye.